today's video I'm going to talk about battery protection circuits and things like that. You've got battery management ICs like BMS, things like that. Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm going to do a video every day, so make sure you come back again tomorrow. Batteries are used a lot on IoT devices these days and anything portable obviously. And so it's quite common to use things like lithium ion cells. So it's quite important to actually know how to best manage these things. I don't have a huge amount of experience with these, but I've got some experience, so I might as well convey what I do know, because that would probably be helpful for most people which are new to it. So let's say you have a single non-BMS managed cell. So there's a battery there, like that. Just a battery. I'm not going to do symbols, I'm just going to show blocks. So in a standard circuit, you may have your device, you know, your, your device under here, and you've got your power coming in, you might have your, your switch, and there's your device like that. So when you power it up, it drains straight the battery. Dead simple circuit. It's just how a lot of things would be done, right? Except when this battery gets over discharged, you can damage it, or it could even catch fire. So you need to think about what you do to manage this discharge situation. Typically, I mean, these lithium cells, you don't want to go below three volts of them, really. So it has to be greater than three volts. Greater than three volts. That's the stipulation. You must not go less than three volts. And you must not go over 4.2 volts. I'm basing this on lithium ion cell, because they're so common you know, 18650s and so on. So you have to be between 3 volts and 4.2 volts to be safe with that cell. And if you just have a circuit like this, well, you're going to go below the 3 volts margin. Also, if you have a charging system added on, you might have some kind of socket for a charger. You might have a standard socket like this, 2.1mm DC jack. And if you try and shove in more than 4.2 volts, you're going to potentially catch fire to the cell. Also, if you put in too much current, you could also catch fire to the cell. So if you had a 4 volt source, you might be okay, but it depends on the current supply. If this is at 3 volts and you try and shove in 5 amps or 10 amps off a 4 volt power supply, which is you know high current supply, you still could potentially catch fire because you're going to be putting too much current to the battery, battery overheat. So you need to think about that aspect, which is why BMS systems are important. So here's just a quick diagram of a typical BMS system. This is one method of doing it, not necessarily the best way. There are other ways. Here's a BMS in between your battery and your device and your charge point. So you can charge this up and the BMS will regulate the voltage and only give the battery what it needs. It monitors the battery voltage, it monitors the current going to the battery and determines cut off voltage for the charging and discharging. So it won't go below 3 volts or whatever the BMS is configured for or above 4.2 volts per cell. The poor cell thing is also another point because this BMS is based on a single cell BMS. You can get BMS which does multiple cells. So we have one connection per battery. So you can actually just do like a chain of batteries and join them all up. Actually I might draw that in a second. What this does, it actually floats up usually the negative side of the battery. It will float that up with a MOSFET to drop the voltage down. Say this is a 12 volt device, or it can handle say 3 volts or 12 volts for example because you've got a built in regulator or something like that. You could charge this with 12 volts. That device will be happy because it will be fine, it's designed to handle that. Your BMS will go, oops that's a bit high, and it will float the negative side up with the MOSFET. And still charge the battery but in a safe way. And it won't allow you to go below 3 volts because it will turn off the device power. If it goes below 3 volts, it goes above 4.2 volts, it won't let that happen either. It will also limit charging, so it will just keep floating that negative side up to keep the battery to below 4.2 volts. So let me just draw on the option for a multiple cell BMS. So minor change, you can see here. All I've done is added on one cell and one wire. So it uses that as a midpoint, battery middle. So that'll be a total then of 8.4 volts instead of 4.2. So it'll be 4.2 across these, 4.2 across those maximum, and 8.4 across the whole set. You can also carry that on. You can have a bunch of cells. You can have 10 cells if you want. You just need to get the BMS that supports that. So in this case, having an 8.4 cell pack, if this is 12 volts coming in, for example, instead of 4 volts, that would be 12 volts. That would be a bit of a better match. Ideally, you'd probably want it like 10 volts or something like that instead to be a bit closer. You could say to 10 to 15 volts or something like that in that particular situation. Now, another important aspect is cell balancing. Now, not all BMSs have balancing available to them. Most check each cell to make sure they're within their tolerance and controls them in that way. Whichever one's weakest, whichever one's strongest, that's what the BMS bases it on, which can be troublesome. If you have two cells which aren't quite matched very well, one might be slightly weaker than the other, or lower state of charge than the other, when it goes to a discharge state, whichever one's lowest, would be the one the BMS will base it on. That gets them 3 volts and that's still 3.4 volts. You've still got capacity left in this battery, but that'll cut it off because this one's gone down to the last level. Or the opposite of that, that could get the 4.2 volts, this would be 3.8 volts, and it will cut off charging. So you're never using your full capacity. So there are BMSs which have cell balancing built into them as well. Let's talk about that.
So this is my second attempt at drawing this because the first time I drew it out it was a very simplified view and I was thinking actually it's not quite correct, it might confuse some people. So I've redrawn this. So you may see in the background of the video I've got a different kind of circuit layout for balancing. So this is actually how it's done. I thought I'd better do the more correct way rather than the oversimplified way because it wasn't quite right. It might have caused some confusion otherwise. When you've got a BMS it's floating up the negative of the battery pack, the entire battery pack. So you've got the, the zero volt rail for your system will be going to ground and a variable resistor effectively which is basically a MOSFET in there or a set of MOSFETs which floats up the negative side of the pack to stabilize the voltage across the pack right so if you've got high voltage going in charging in this case it could be 14 volts or so going in this will float that up so it's only getting 12.6 volts across the pack instead maximum right that's what it does as I mentioned I think before when it comes to balancing the BMS section and the balancing could be on the same board quite often they are on the same board Sometimes you need a separate balancing ball because the BMS doesn't have balancing built onto it. You can attach a balancing ball, which I mentioned. Now I'm going to show some examples of that soon. Each cell has its own monitoring system. They're all exactly the same. They're all basically cascaded one after the other. Could be one cell, could be 10 cells, could be 20 cells. Doesn't matter. Each one's independent. So what we have is an IC here, which could be a DWO1, for example, and that monitors the battery voltage. When the voltage gets up to a certain threshold, which is about 4.2 volts or so, maybe 4.22 or maybe slightly more, around that kind of region, what it does is it closes this switch here, which is a MOSFET. When it closes that switch, it connects a resistor across that cell. And what it does is it loads that cell down a little bit so the voltage will drop. It also provides an alternative current path for the rest of the cells, so these can continue charging. Now, hopefully, this balance is correct and the BMS doesn't shut off charging whilst this is still happening. But when this comes down in voltage by being loaded down, it should allow the actual charge control IC to continue trying to charge the pack. What that will do, this voltage will come down, these ones here will continue to come up. So what it does is it loads down the stronger cell to give the weaker cells a chance to increase. And that's that's the balancing. Because it's got individual circuits, each one, this will be the next one that comes up. Once that gets to 4.2 volts, this IC will sense that, close that switch, put the resistor across just like this one did, and load that one down. So then these two will both be loaded down because they both have achieved maximum charge to give this one time to come up some more. Once all three are up fully to 4.2 volts the BMS controller should actually be allowing for that and then it will actually float them up quite high voltage so basically there's negligible charge current going to the cells or you know, it might be milliamps or something that's going in just to keep them topped up. Um, but generally when they say reach the maximum charge level then it will actually cut off charging anyway. That's how it works. You may see in the background I've got a different setup for the balancing which I was trying to explain in a simplified way, but I think it was too simplified. It wasn't actually technically correct enough. So ignore that one if you see that. Base it on this. So here I have a few different examples of BMS modules and balance boards. So this one here's a single cell BMS. Not much to it. So you do is you connect the actual circuit you're powering it with and your device goes onto these terminals. Your battery goes to that terminal and this one. It's got a shared positive and it's floating negative. That's the same before, it's a negative which is floated. That is the MOSFET and that's the control chip. And let's just make sure that the voltage is within spec. If it's outside the range of a single cell, it will turn the battery off or float it up with the MOSFET. This one here is a two cell BMS with balancing as well. These are the big MOSFETs here, they're just switching. This is a higher current board. And here's a couple of resistors here. These are used to the balancing, so it actually loads these on across the positive supplies in order to balance the cell. So again, you've got the power connections here. The ball's upside down, but negative, positive here which is common to the batteries and the negatives are the one which floats through the MOSFETs here and there's the battery terminals there flip it over you can see some more here so battery negative, battery middle, battery positive so that's the negative terminals, that's the join between the two batteries and that's the positive of the other battery in other words at 0 volts, 4.2 volts, 8.4 volts so this is a 3 cell BMS this is only BMS, it's got no balancing on it so again we've got MOSFETs here and this does 3 cells so you've got your power supply, positive negative goes here and the connections here for your battery terminals and there so flip it over, it's got markings on the back as well so there's 0 volt, 4.2 volt, 8.4 volt and 12.6 volts and again as you can see the positive is connected directly to the positive of the battery and it's the negative which is being floated by the MOSFETs so that's purely a BMS, no balancing on this one and this is purely a balancing board so it's got sensing on it, so you basically stick these across the batteries this is a 4 cell board, so you've got battery negative positive, so that's 4.2 volts, next battery positive, that's 8.4 volts, 12.6, 16.8. So that's your four battery connections. You don't have to use all of them because these are basically four independent circuits. They are just daisy chained to each other. So if you wanted to only just use one of them you could, or use two you could, as long as you use the two that are side by side, you'd be alright. 
but this is just the balancing board. So you hook this up to your batteries, that will then put this load across that battery when it reaches that voltage. And it's also got an LED on here to indicate when it's working. Well, also put some links down below for those boards, so if you want to play with those boards and get some yourself, you can purchase them using links I've put down below. The other thing to think about with battery balancing is if you're not actually got a balanced circuit in there and you've got a situation where you've got two imbalanced cells. Let's look at that. So this is an example for things like alkaline cells rather than lithiums. Oh, they could consider nickel metal hydride as well, maybe, because it's similar sort of voltages. So let's say you've got 1.5 volt cells, just for example, it could be anything really, but this is just for the example I'm going to give you, because it's a fairly common scenario for alkaline cells. Let's say you've got a device and your batteries are going flat, but you've got one battery which is still okay. It's, you know, you, some reason ones work better than the rest. So you replace the, some of the cells in the pack and you put some new batteries in. And the new battery is all 1.5 volt, but one battery is weaker than the rest. Now, it may start off okay. I mean, your new cells might actually be close to 1.7 volts, brand new, actually. So when they drop down a little bit, you might find these might drop down 0.2 volt, that's dropped down 0.2 volt, but now this is much lower than these. Now this is two independent circuits as you can see, so this will be giving you know four and a half volts or so at the output. Let's say five volt output would be typical when they're brand new, five volts. Now if you've got two good cells and one weak cell, I'm going to say a bad cell, I'm going to call it a weak cell, and you're drawing current through this, as these cells drop down, all of them are going to be dropping down together. They're in series, so therefore they're all doing the same current. So they're all going to drop down around the same kind of rate, or the same energy loss. But what happens is when this one gets down so low, these are still fairly good. And you end up, this cell here could be down to zero volts. And these might still be one volt because of the nature of discharge curves. And then you've got two volts and zero volts here. Then what happens? Well, these batteries were actually, because they're trying to support this one in a way, this can actually go reverse polarity. Believe it or not, this can actually change polarity. That's something can happen when you get down to this low voltage. It can actually flip over and go the other way. Yeah, I know. It's, it's weird, but it can happen. And so what you might end up then is this one then becomes negative, say, 0.2 volts instead. Then you end up with the whole circuit just drops and collapses and all sorts of problems. And also then you get leakage on this battery because it's trying to reverse charge it and that can usually result in them failing and leaking. That's why a lot of manufacturers say don't mix batteries up, don't put old and new batteries together. Because when you get this weak battery which gets down to this really low voltage and starts to be reverse charged because of these batteries being still quite good, that's when it starts to leak. Another example is if you have two parallel strings of batteries, while well, I've drawn a second string here. If you have two parallel strings of batteries, because that's it takes six batteries, maybe it takes six. Maybe they're not all in series, maybe you've got two parallel strings, which are three in series. If you then have five good batteries and one weak one, what's happening? Think about it. This is 4.5 volts, that's 3.7 volts. This battery here will be trying to charge up that one. So this string will be trying to balance itself out, and it'll try to charge this battery up. And that may not go well for you. <laughs> Batteries not meant to be charged up. Well, some aren't. You know, if there's alkaline cells, you'd be trying to charge this battery up effectively. And again, that'll cause it to leak. So this is why it says don't mix batteries. Because you get these kinds of scenarios where the battery can actually be reverse polarity, Or it will drain the rest of the bank trying to charge that one up. Which doesn't go well.